I, I can say this that uh, I, I, I fully understand that conflict you had because I think a lot of people who, who question uh, these norms uh, coming from Islam uh, go through exactly that. And I, I also had this uh, journey uh, of like uh, thinking and reasoning, thinking and reasoning about the, the subject of hijab. Um, if, uh, first of all, I want to say this, that it's so interesting to me that the people who are so norm critical and find the patriarchy in every single corner of society can't see the patri patriarchy in the hijab. It is such a sad uh, state of affairs when patriarchy looks you in the eyes and you say this is freedom and anyone who does that i think is uh, has done a disservice to uh, the fight for freedom yeah but um i also had a hijab uh, once and i have taken it off um and i actually put it on when i was around 14 years old and it was my choice to do so uh, my mom was like Inas, what, why would you do this she actually put it on in her 30s mm -hmm. and everybody around me was like are you sure you want to do this you know that you can't take it off afterwards this is a permanent choice but the issue all of us is were told that permanent choice that's what my mom told me it just yeah. like exactly those words like you know you can't take it off so if you put it on mm -hmm. i was like yeah yeah i'm sure so yeah. it was yeah sorry go on yeah, but then I, I I changed my mind around like the age of I actually don't wear it. I wore it for a couple of years and changed my mind, and I removed it. And that actually was a really difficult thing to do for a teenager. Um, mm -hmm. I I lost friends. I I I've always had this you know good girl mentality uh, that I lost uh, from my family and uh, friends or relatives. Um, and it was as a, a fight against honor culture when I, that I did that I didn't know that I was get going get getting into. But thankfully, my family are very very accepting. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it took I, a while. I'm sure it wasn't like oh okay cool you take you've taken it exactly. off. Exactly. Yeah. No, it it was very very uh, confused. Uh, uh, thing because they, I, I actually put it on in what I thought was my fully informed choice. Mm -hmm. um, but let us also look at what you also spoke about choice. What choice does a woman have when you tell her whole, all her life that without the hijab, she's dirty, that without she's the hijab, impure. she's impure, that without the hijab, she will burn in hell for eternity. It's like, Oh, the, the, the robber gave you a choice. He gave you a choice between giving him your money or him killing you. <laughs> it's yeah, that like was, that was the choice he gave you. Choice. Yeah. No, um, and it's, it's, it's crazy how, like you said, what is a choice, right? Yeah. If you're telling a woman that she's going to go to hell, is that a choice? Like, you know, when people say hijab is there's no compulsion in religion. Oh, yeah, because if you don't compel, you're going to go to hell. Exactly. Like, and whether or not you believe in hell is is a very different question because you know like right now um if somebody like i i don't believe in hell but there's so many others that do and that for those who do believe in hell um or those who are actually coming out as well or people or young people who don't who only know what an idea of hell is not collecting evidence or anything to make that judgment and they're like oh you're gonna go to hell if you don't believe you're gonna go to hell if you don't wear a hijab you're gonna go to hell if you don't pray you're gonna go to hell you're, in, you're gonna go to hell, and that is your entire life based on That's fear. That's your free choice. <laughs> That's yeah. your free choice. That nobody yeah. compelled you to be a Muslim. We <laughs> only told you about hell, so that you know the right path. Exactly.